Hey, good morning, fish heads. It is loud. The background noise is the AC and ventilation unit that I run in the shop in the summertime. It's necessary. It's muggy outside. It's going to be about 95 degrees in the shade. Um, but I've got a cool small water session store in store for you guys. But I've got a cool small water session in store for you guys. This is the Jackal Jiren. And this is the Jiren Jr., the baby, the baby G. Um, I got it used, which is perfectly fine. It's intact. Everything looks to be in good shape body-wise. There's no chips. There's no cracks. Actually looks like a really superb bait. Why would I paint this? Well, I wanted to get a bluegill color on this. And I, and I do bluegills occasionally, not often. Uh, but this, this really feels like it needs to be a bluegill color for me. Um, I've already taken the eyes off. I have taken off the gear. The hooks, as you guys can see, are pretty well trashed. We're going to replace those with Aaron Martin Gamagatsu's, the, uh, the light wire finesse, because this is definitely built for small waters. So here we go. Let's paint something cool today, guys. <laughs> This is a Jackal Baby Garen. It's two and a half inches long, single jointed. Looks like the uh, fins are attached. Tail is definitely attached. So it's two pieces that have been pressed. Two and a half inches or 60 millimeters or six centimeters, if you would rather metric. And it's in fairly decent shape. As you saw, we've taken the hooks off, we've taken the gear off, taken the eyes out, and we're going to turn this into a really cool bluegill. Let's get started. Normally, this is the last step that I take, which is adding a little bit of Comart, this opaque pearl, as an additive. But uh, this one is tinted a little bit blue with some blue mica and mostly silver. And on top of this beautiful gold, just gonna lightly spray the entire thing with this opaque pearl. You don't wanna kill it here, but you do want it fairly heavily. And you see it'll start to bead up just a little bit. We want that. I want a little bit of texture to this bait. It's not going to affect the swimmability, anything of that nature. And now that we have that, we're going to heat set it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of this wicked detail fluorescent we're going to add that in to the chest area I can probably bring my pressure down just a little bit dropped it to about 20 just want to get the throat and a little bit of the chest there and I kind of want to fade that into the rest of this bait. Just on the bottom. And you can see that it's already starting to take on a little bit different of a character than it had. And these gill plates are real raised on this gear in, which I like. And we're gonna better define them in a little bit get all the rest of that out of the chamber. And now we're going to run with just a little bit of this Spectratex electric blue. Not much. The 
This is going to add just a little bit of metallic sheen, and I'm going to put that in the cheek area. I'm going to shoot down as I do that. Shoot down on the other side. You can see just a hint in that cheek now. We're going to come back and just give a little bit more of a shot now to better blend and lighten up this blue and give that sheen back to the fluorescent sunburst on the throat. The next step in this process is a fairly simple one. I've cut a little bit of a jagged piece here and you guys can see that I've got Russ's fin wheel out but this bait is way too small for the fin wheel so I went ahead and cut my own. We're not going to be using that just yet but I also have a small ear flap cut out so we have a pectoral fin and an ear flap. So our next step is going to be to create the lines that we need for those bluegills and because there's a little hint of scaling on the top of this bait from the original pattern it should not be that difficult. Now I have brought my pressure way down. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more. And we want these lines to be very subdued. So we want to be careful with where we put them. It might get noisy here, folks. We've got a thunderstorm kind of in the area. I'm going to wipe that down, flip this over, come at it from the other side. And we'll go backwards this time not heat setting in between. You just want to get those lines completed. And this is a great way to do it. And what you end up with, something that looks like that. And if the camera's not picking this up real well because of the pearl additive that I have on this bait, my apologies, I will get there with you guys. We're just going to flip this over while we have it. And the cool thing about this is that the scaling is exact from side to side. So we're going to just do the same thing on the other side of the bait. We're going to start where we started before, but we're going to do the opposite side first. And all the way down to the tail. Then we're going to come back and we're going to line up this other side. And as long as you use a low enough pressure, you should be able to achieve these lines without that much of an issue. You might have to clear it out just every once in a while because we're using, I'm using like 10 PSI right now, it's super low, but I don't want splatter on this. I just want 
Get in there. There it is. I just want a good line here. And that's what we got. Now while I have this black magenta in here, kind of rough cut the, uh, the gill plate here and we're going to enhance that as well. even come and do this little section here. And there's a, another little piece on the inside that we can go ahead and shade. And we'll shade this as well. So now we're completely shaded on that gill plate. I might come back and just clean that up a bit. Also, get a little bit of darkness on that eye. Now we're going to flip to the other side. And get this gill plate on this side as well. right here. And then do our lines just to better define that. This is some uh, sunrise yellow. And I'm just going to put a couple of drops in here and accent all of the external fins before we move on with anything else. Just cleaned out this on the off-camera part. Pretty much all you have to do is angle your brush away and down and now you can pick up that yellow kind of give it that transparent, translucent look. Clean this out and we're going to heat set while my compressor runs. On to the throat of this bait, I'm just going to add a little bit of darker orange. This is actually called a sunset red, but it's an orange. And I might add just a little bit onto this back dorsal fin and run that out and then on top of that I'm going to add just a little red two drops tops bring this pressure down a little bit I'm going to run the back edge of that back dorsal fin And just the edge of that. And let's get a good heat set on this. I've got just a little bit of black loaded into this chamber now. And we're going to use that to our advantage. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but there's a very defined gill plate line 
square the e uh, the the gearings are pressed and made to look like bluegill to begin with so all we're doing is I'm bringing that out just a little bit just a tiny bit I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side make sure that's dry come down and just work off of the existing line that's already there so now we have a consistent ear flap on both sides now to this I'm gonna kind of just take these edges and very lightly tip them dark and you'll see why there's a purpose and a method to the madness barely at all but enough to see because we're going to contrast that with white on the edges we're looking at spawn post spawn depending on where you are in the country june if you're up north and in smallmouth territory they're still spawning um, one nifty little thing about most of the panfish is that they will overtake a bass nest after they're done spawning and use it as their own fairly crafty it's less work they have to do the bed's already made for them we got that sitting in there we've heat set this and before we do the edges here in white I want to do the underside of this ear flap so I'm going to take a little bit thicker of a scrap paper here thicker of a paint this opaque createx white just drop a drop down there you don't need much don't even really need a whole drop roll load that paintbrush and it's a roll load because you're actually rolling you're actually rolling your fingers so that everything's coated well do have thunderstorms nearby it's kind of starting to rain outside so if it gets noisy my apologies now all we're gonna do nice crisp line doesn't have to be big it's not going to be big and same thing on the other side start at the gill plate and work your way back good deal well, one thing that we can do to make this just a little fancier because you do and you will see it is just kind of rough tip this with your paintbrush on the edges of these and you can kind of roll it across the top here kind of go down now you can probably better see why I used a little bit of black in there we're going to do that with the edges on every single fin it just dresses the bait a little bit better and I love doing it on bluegill just a little bit to tip it on the tail flip to the other side
some of this is already translated over. But really all I'm doing is this motion very lightly on the top. And it gives the illusion of a more natural looking fin. Something you guys can goof around with if you're dealing with swim baits and lures that actually have these fins. You can't pull this off on a crankbait really, unless you're doing a pectoral fin on the side. But you can definitely do it and get away with it and make it look good on a swim bait, just like this. Almost there. Kind of round those edges a little bit. Drop that down. And there we have it. That is your well-dressed custom Jackal Garen. Oh yeah, and a heat set. Gotta do a heat set. almost forgot. I want to accent the edges. And it's a fairly small bait, so I'm not going to mess with having a stencil out. This is all freestyle, folks. Fun with paintbrushes. And on this, I'm just tipping the edge. I don't want to overload the paintbrush. Kind of add a little bit of detail in here. Now we're on that final heat set and some eyes. These eyes are 3.5 millimeter and I'm limited on what I have. Now what came on these Jackal Garens is sort of a greenish yellow, but because it's a panfish, I'm gonna give it a, a yellowish red pair of eyes. Just want to be super careful. You know what? I'm not even, this is an old one. I've got plenty of fluid in here, but I'm going to pull out the old gorilla on this because I like the tip better. Make sure it's ready to flow. Yeah, it is. One, two, 
one drop on that already. One drop there, and that is it. That's all you need. I do. I switch up brands. Um, some I like better than others. Let's drop these eyes in. Pull it up off my finger a little better. Ah, that's not how we want to do it. Son of a gun. Hopefully the other side will come out a little bit better. They're sticking to my fingers. So muggy out. That's better. Let me show you what we got here. That is what we have here, folks. And we are going to brush on, not dip, this bait. We're going to do that before the storm hits, so we'll be right back. Well, it looks like the storm has dissipated. The glue has set. The signature is set. We don't need a good brush for this. We just need a brush that the, the hair is going to stay on. Uh, I've got just a little bit of this. Now, this is the original. This is back from December, y'all. December 15th or 16th when I got this. Um, and it's this much. I haven't added any. I promise you I've added nothing to this. And this is that new lot. KBS. Been sitting in the jar. Um, there's the numbers on it. And it's still as liquid as ever. We're going to brush this on. We don't need a flat brush or an expensive brush. We just need a brush that is going to do the job. And we can use thinner layers on this because it's a smaller bait. And I'll do probably three or four layers on this. want to get it up into the crevices. Another little drop. Slide that across there. Make sure that you don't get it. You, you guys ask all the time how I do swim baits. This is a smaller version, but I don't add rubber bands. I don't do any of that stuff. I just am very careful when I, and I don't dip it. I apply it with a brush, as, as should you guys. Just make sure you have everything covered, even strokes. And you want it just a tiny bit tacky as you're finishing up one side of this because you don't want it to, to drip on you. Once that's on the top, then I'm going to go ahead and add this to it. I'll crimp it together. And then I will do the same thing on the bottom. And I can even hold one side and start out that way. Just nice light strokes. Get the top. And then there's only one little edge that you got to worry about, or side rather. Get the underside, nice good coat, and then we'll pull our fingers off completely. Just do this last little bit over the jar. And that
that is it folks I hope I've been able to show you a couple of cool things today freestyle with small brushes on small baits can be fun this is going to be an outstanding small waters bait it is the bonus video for the weekend the one that's scheduled is going to come up either Saturday or Sunday and that is going to be Alexia's rainbow pike for a young lady from a school project um, very excited about how that has turned out and we're going to edit that probably tonight or tomorrow but uh, you guys have a great weekend I hope you get out on the water and do some fishing thanks for hanging out with me on the channel for a little bit I always appreciate the view and I appreciate your input so leave me a comment in the section below what would you like me to do next cheers happy casting from Jekyll Bates Do do do. Stupid E, stop it.